Good evening, welcome to a very special program. Tomorrow, Lok Sabha elections 2024 will begin with voting for 102 seats. The biggest phase in these elections with voting spread across the length and breadth of the country in 21 states and union territories. In 2019, the UPA had won 45 of these 102 seats that go to polls tomorrow. The NDA had won 41. Six of these seats have not been redrawn as a part of the delimitation exercise. Now, significantly, polling will be held in all of the seats in Tamil Nadu. All 39 uh, seats of polling will be held in addition to smaller states across the Northeast, Lakshadweep and the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. On the show tonight, and it's a 90-minute special, a deep dive into what's at stake, the clash of ideologies. The clash of manifestos, a look back at the feverish pitch of campaigning, the big faces whose political fate will be decided when polling happens tomorrow. I'm Vishnu Shaw. And I'm Gargi Rawat and we'll be going across to our reporters as well. Remember con to continue watching NDTV's special coverage of these elections. We'll be joined by Vedant and uh, Saurabh and uh, Ronak will be joining us from Nagpur. Vedant from Alwar and Saurabh will be joining us from Kuch Bihar. As all these places will see polling tomorrow in the first phase of the elections. But I'll tell you what, Gargi, I think it's time to give our viewers an idea of where all it's happening because so many states, the biggest phase. So I'm just going to go across now to the big screen and uh, point out the areas where it's all going to be taken. 102 seats in 21 states. And let's bring up the graphics so that we can indicate where it's happening. Uh, small states and union territories, the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. It's also taking place in Arunachal Pradesh, two seats uh, over there. Assam, five seats, so a part of Assam. Bihar, four seats. The south of Bihar, Chhattisgarh, just one, uh, one seat. Jammu and Kashmir, just one seat. Lakshadweep, the Lakshadweep Islands has only one, so one seat over there. Uh, Madhya Pradesh, six. So the, the, the east and the southeast of Madhya Pradesh, significantly five in Maharashtra. But as we go through this, also Manipur, two seats over there. Most of the states in the northeast will be covered uh, tomorrow in many of their seats. Uh, two seats in Meghale as well. Nagaland, one seat. And uh, Puducherry, one. And then, of course, uh, Rajasthan, 12. So not all, about half the number of seats in Rajasthan. Sikkim, uh, one. And uh, finally, the really big one tomorrow in terms of the overall number of seats, more than any other state, 39 of 39 seats in Rajasthan uh, go uh, to uh, voting tomorrow. But let's give you an idea of what happened in 2019. The phase one results in 2019, all of these seats that we are talking about, um, the results in 102 seats, the NDA had 147, the India Alliance, of course the India Alliance didn't exist then, but those representing the India Alliance now had 149. So a slender lead to the India Alliance then in those states, led primarily by the performance of uh, the Congress and its allies, the DMK, of course, in Tamil Nadu. Uh, in terms of uh, the number of seats, if you look at the two major parties, the Congress well below the BJP, which had done well as an individual party. The number, uh, as I mentioned, was driven last time around primarily by that Tamil Nadu situation where uh, the DMK did well. 102 constituencies in phase one in numbers. These are the constituencies which will be going to polls tomorrow. 16.6 crore uh, voters will be involved uh, tomorrow, 1,625 candidates. We've got a breakup of those candidates. 134 of those candidates are women. 1.87 lakh polling stations. It is a mammoth exercise, but then what is it mammoth about our election process? 18 lakh security personnel and others also deployed for this particular process. And it is just the first phase of these elections. It's going to be a long, hot summer uh, and it's all starting out now. Gargi has got a list of the big contestants. That's right. It's going to be a long, long election with seven phases tomorrow. The first phase, the biggest phase of these elections. So let's just take a look at some of the prominent uh, faces of this particular phase. So in Rajasthan from Alwar, you have a union environment minister, Bhupender Yadav, who is uh, hitting, who has hit the, you know, the dust and the heat of the campaign trail. And he's contesting for the first time. Uh, he was a Rajya Sabha member and you have Sarbanand Sonowal, former Assam chief minister, 
contesting from Dibrugar in Assam. Uh, Union Minister Kiran Rijiju uh, once again contesting from Arunachal West and, you know, uh, hoping to return, of course, for the fourth time to Parliament. Uh, Gaurav Gogoi, uh, son of the former uh, Chief Minister of Assam and very popular Chief Minister Tarun Gogoi, this time he is contesting from Jorhat. He has been a member of Parliament before, but he has changed his uh, seat this time to uh, Jorhat. And this is something the Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma has been campaigning quite actively against him. Uh, Nitin Gadkari uh, contesting once again from Nagpur and hoping uh, for a hat-trick Union Minister Nitin Gadkari from Nagpur. Uh, Kani Moy is uh, contesting from Thutakudi and, uh, uh, and hoping to win it again. She's the sister of, uh, of Tamil Nadu Chief Minister Stalin. A Raja, another a senior leader of the DMK and has been former uh, Telecom Minister and Union Minister, will be contesting again from the Nilgiris and, uh, and belonging to the same uh, family of Stalin. You have his nephew, the Anidhi Maran, contesting from the DMK from Chennai Central. Also in uh, Tamil Nadu, which is the one to watch out for tomorrow as all 39 seats go to the polls, uh, K. Anamalai, uh, the BJP uh, chief in uh, Tamil Nadu, uh, someone who's been really leading the entire effort of the BJP in Tamil Nadu. He took out that Pad Yatra, but can he really translate it into votes? Coimbatore is the one seat which the BJP is very, very hopeful about. Uh, then uh, Dr. Tamili Sai Sondarajan, someone who contested the elections last time. She lost, uh, then became a governor. She was the governor of Telangana and uh, then she resigned and re-entered active politics and she's contesting from Chennai South. Then you have a former congressman, someone who's seen as close to the Gandhi family, Jitin Prasad, who joined the BJP a few years ago. Uh, he is someone who's been a union minister in the UPA government, and uh, he is contesting from Pilibhit, and that's very interesting, as you know, this time uh, Varun Gandhi did not get that uh, ticket uh, by, from the BJP. He'd become quite uh, a critic of the BJP, criticizing several policies as well of the Modi-led government, and he was uh, skipped over for the ticket this time around. It was given to Jitin Prasad. So this is a new area for him and uh, the Congress has been uh, campaigning against him, calling him an outsider, the Samajwadi Party, the Congress, uh, you know, the alliance there in Uttar Pradesh. Uh, Karthi Chidambaram uh, hoping uh, to win once again from Sivaganga, uh, son of uh, senior Congress leader P. Chidambaram and uh, Dr. Jitendra Singh, Union Minister, hoping for a hat-trick from Udhampur, though this time he's uh, facing Mr. Chaudhary, a candidate from the Congress uh, who's also being supported by the PDP and NC. And then uh, you have a uh, uh, you know, big minority leader, Imran Masood, contesting from Saharanpur. He's somebody who was in the Congress. He left. He did the rounds. Uh, he went to uh, uh, the Samajwadi Party, then went to the BSP. He was expelled. And then he returned to the Congress saying he's going to stay in the Congress now. So he is contesting from Saharanpur. That's one seat the Congress is very hopeful about. Anil Baluni is a contesting from Garhwal, the BJP media head, a spokesperson. He's uh, actually, uh, and, and Garhwal, is, the district is a very prominent one. It has all the major dhams of Uttarakhand. And uh, you have Manikam Tagore, who is contesting from Virudhunagar, uh, from the Congress party there in Tamil Nadu, hoping to return. This is, he is uh, the, the sitting up, up, you know, MP from this uh, constituency, and he's hoping uh, to return, though he's facing some star candidates. Uh, in this time around in this election. Well, uh, Vishnu, let's now go across to all our reporters to find out what's happening there on the ground yep. on the eve of elections. We've got Radha Kukre joining us from Nagpur. Saurav Gupta joins us from Kuch Bihar. Vidanta Agarwal covering the Rajasthan elections besides many other elections that we'll make him cover. Uh, Vedant, let me come to you first. The Congress in uh, Rajasthan was in a rail crisis in the recent assembly elections. It was a crisis of leadership besides so many other things. Uh, very little time. You're now into the Lok Sabha elections. Has has there been any clear sign of the party reviving itself in the state? Well, Rajasthan, Vishnu, has been in election mode for the past couple of months, in fact, because, you know, you had the assembly elections here as well. But where I come to you from, the Alwar seat is extremely crucial. This time around, as Gargi mentioned, you know, it's Bupender Yadav who will be taking on Lalit Yadav of the Congress. It was Baba Balaknath's seat, uh, you know, last time around in 2019. We remember the national wave around Pulwama uh, and Baba Balaknath had a landslide victory uh, with more than 3 lakh votes in his favour. And I come to you from this iconic clock tower here uh, in Alwar. In fact, 
fact, uh, you know, Alvar, this time is uh, going to see a battle of Yadavs. But let, let us get a sense from some people here because, you know, there's a lot of Farsan and Mithai, which is all, you know, Rajasthan elections is all about that, which is why it's such a reporter's delight to cover uh, Rajasthan. You have, uh, you know, this this uh, clock tower market here, which is all about the Farsan and Mithai. Let me get in a sense, sir, your name, tell Manu. Manu ji, tell me, Alvar is voting on which side of the vote will be on which side of the Alvar is the biggest problem of water. पानी की समस्या मुझे कई लोग बता रहे हैं कि बहुत बड़ी समस्या क्या है ये गांव की समस्या नहीं शहर की समस्या है आप की समस्या ये क्या दिक्कत होती है पानी तीन दिन दिन में एक बार आता है नहीं आता तो पंद्रह पंद्रह दिन में भी नहीं आता पानी अच्छा एक बात और मुझे बताइए सर आप कि अभी राजस्थान में स्टेट में भी इलेक्शंस हुए थे तो स्टेट इलेक्शन में और नेशनल इलेक्शन में क्या फर्क है क्या आपके दिमाग में वही मुद्दे रहते हैं दोनों इलेक्शन में सर मुद्दे तो क्या सर कैसे बताएं मुद्दे तो कोई ऐसा नहीं है लेकिन बस वहाँ पर जल संकट चल रहा है थोड़ा सा राजस्थान में देखो जब हो जाता है तो हो जाता है अभी बीजेपी सरकार आई है उससे पहले कांग्रेस सरकार थी अब देखते हैं क्या होता है अभी तो टाइम लगेगा भी चार पांच महीने हुए so of course Vishnu, you know, uh, in Rajasthan we of course see there's a tradition of unseating the incumbent, and here in Alwar, you know, the wind always blows in favour of the party in the centre. So it remains to be seen whether Alwar maintains this tradition this time around as well or not. Right, and the BJP really, you know, uh, when it comes to Rajasthan, it's the prime minister's face. It's the prime minister who is the person, you know, leading the battle, and uh, the votes are all asked for in the prime minister's name. But for the Congress, Vedanta, it's a real prestige issue now because last two elections. Uh, it, you know, they've been clean, bold, as it were. Uh, the, uh, the BJP are uh, hoping for a hat-trick this time, 25 on 25. And the Congress, though, th this time is talking about how they're going to, you know, give them a tough fight and uh, hopefully win back some of that prestige that they've lost by losing every election. That's right. In fact, there's been a lot of brainstorming within the Congress here as well. They've been they focused particularly on the tribal seats. Uh, remember, the Congress did really badly in the tribal seats in the state elections. In fact, the campaign this time has been focused a lot uh, around those areas. In fact, areas like Churu, uh, extremely important. Also, where uh, you know Ashok Gehlot's son, Web of Gehlot, is contesting from Jalore. That that Jalore seat has seen a lot of high voltage campaigning from Gandhi's on the campaign trail. To of course Ashok Gehlot campaigning extensively uh, for. For his son as well. In fact, within the Congress, there was some sort of infighting uh, that we saw yet again uh, with some leaders from the pilot camp saying that Gehloth is focusing only on his son's seat. But of course, then those rumors were, you know, those reports were all sort of uh, laid. But this time around for the Congress, the real, uh, the, the real prestige battle is in the tribal seats where the Prime Minister himself has focused a great deal. And if we talk about the Alwar belt, where I am coming to you from, you know, this Alwar, uh, these constituencies in and around Alwar have been in the news for, you know, the mob lynchings, the Pehlu Khan. Khan lynching comes to mind, the Rakhbar Khan lynching. So, right. you know, this time around, of course, uh, remember the Congress won six out of the eight seats in the state assembly election. So, they, they hope to sort of ride high on that title. Sure, Vedat, I'm going to interrupt you. Quickly go across now to Saurabh Gupta. Saurabh, um, if you look at the performance of the BJP over the last couple of elections, the national elections uh, in Bengal, um, you know, I mean, there was a, a significant improvement over the last couple of elections from very few seats to a better performance last time around. Um, Given the extent of campaigning uh, and their hopes, particularly around North Bengal, where does the BJP see itself in the state against Mamta, who has always been one of their strongest competitors? Well, the BJP has an edge, and that edge is simply because of the fact that they have all these seats in North Bengal. All these seats in North Bengal are BJP-held seats. And therefore, for the Trinamul to dislodge the BJP would take effort not to mention the parties put in that effort, but whether it will fructify into results or not is something that the voters will decide tomorrow when they vote in the voting booths. But Nishit Pramanik is a strong contender. He's been the Minister of State for Home Affairs in the Narendra Modi government. On the other side, you have Jagdish Basunia, who's again a local man, uh, a fellow Rajbanshi candidate. The Rajbanshi community has considerable uh, you know, clout over electoral results here and which way they would uh, can decide the fate of a candidate. The other seat that's going to polls is Alipuddwar, which is the neighboring constituency. There, the BJP had dropped the sitting MP and fielded Manoj Tigga, who's a man of the ground, who's their chief whip. And therefore, where amendments are required, even in North Bengal, where the BJP is, uh, has seen a huge surge in support, they've made amendments to candid candidates and changed candidates when necessary. Jalpaiguri is again a 
closely contested seat because remember, the Trinamul is trying to recover lost ground. Prime Minister Modi has campaigned in Kuch Bihar, in Jalpaiguri. Mamata Banerjee, Abhishek Banerjee have all campaigned in all these seats with the Trinamul focusing heavily on Jalpaiguri as well. Given that there was a storm recently, you would remember, and a lot of the political dialogue over this storm in between these two parties happened, so that became a political issue. The three seats vote in the first phase tomorrow, Alipuddwar, Jalpaiguri and Kuch Bihar, where I'm coming to you from. All right, uh, thanks so much, Sora, for joining us uh, with all those details from Kuch Bihar. And uh, let's go across to Ronak uh, Kukre now, who joins us from uh, Nagpur. And Ronak, this is a seat that Nitin Gadkari, the union minister, is hoping uh, for a hat trick to win it for the third time. Tell us more about the seats going to the polls uh, tomorrow in phase one. आज ये देखिए निश्चित तौर पर अगर नागपुर की बात की जाए तो तीसरी बार हैट्रिक लगाने के लिए यहाँ पर नितिन गडकरी मैदान में उतरे हैं नितिन गडकरी ने लोगों से साफ तौर पर कहा है कि जिस तरह का डेवलपमेंट इस पूरे इलाके में किया है उसको देखकर ही यहाँ पर जो है वो मतदान करना चाहिए कुछ नागपुर के लोग हैं जो कि इस वक्त यहाँ पर मौजूद है उनसे जानेंगे आप ये बताइए कि क्या मुद्दे हैं और क्या देख आप इस बार मतदान करने वाले हैं मतदान तो इस बार हम डेवलपमेंट देख के करेंगे कि नहीं क्योंकि हमारे नागपुर के जो है नितिन जी गडकरी है कि नहीं उनके सामने तो मुझे लगता नहीं कोई कैंडिडेट टिक पाएगा क्योंकि उनका जो डेवलपमेंट देख सकते हैं जैसे मेट्रो मेट्रो मिहान का डेवलपमेंट जो हमारे इधर समृद्धि एक्सप्रेस बना है और हमारे इधर मेट्रो का नेक्स्ट फेज आने वाला है अभी जी जो ऑलमोस्ट उसका काम चालू हो चुका है ये बताइए आपका क्या नाम है आ, सर निखिल नाम है क्या नाम क्या काम करते हैं सर मैं जे पेंट में हूँ ये बताइए कि कल मतदान होने जा रहा है आप भी मतदान करेंगे क्या आपके मुद्दे हैं क्या सोचकर मतदान करेंगे सर कैसा है कि अभी तक के जो काम हुआ है और जो कि काम कर रहा है यानी नितिन गडकरी जी ने जो किया है नागपुर के लिए मीन्स ऑल ओवर इसके लिए उसके हिसाब से हम लोग मतदान देंगे या मीन्स एक सही उम्मीदवार को जिसने काम किया है रियलिटी जैसे कि मेट्रो का सर ने काम किया है ना और बाकी सारी चीज़ें हैं जैसे कि मिहान में कुछ कंपनियाज वगैरह आई है अपनी नए आई टी कंपनीज वगैरह जैसे है ना तो और रोडों के काम हुए हैं उस हिसाब से सर हम मतदान करेंगे सर जी आप देख सकते हैं कि निश्चित तौर पर ये कुछ यहाँ के ऐसे मुद्दे हैं जिसको लेकर यहाँ पर मतदान किया जाएगा ना केवल नागपुर में आपको बता दूं कि विदर्भ की पांच सीटों पर कल मतदान होना है जिसमें गढ़चिरौली ये नक्सल प्रभावित इलाका माना जाता है और वहाँ पर भी बीजेपी और कांग्रेस के बीच में सीधा मुकाबला जो है वो देखने को मिलेगा इसके अलावा एक और सीट है चंद्रपुर की सीट जो दो में केवल एकमात्र सीट जो कांग्रेस पार्टी ने जीती थी वो चंद्रपुर की सीट थी और इस बार वहाँ पर फिर एक बार प्रतिभा धानोरकर जो सुरेश धानोरकर की पत्नी है वो सुधीर मुनगंटीवार को चुनौती दे रही है सुधीर मुनगंटीवार की अगर बात की जाए तो बीजेपी के कद्दावर नेता है पार्टी ने इस बार उन्हें लोकसभा के चुनाव में मैदान में उतारा है फिलहाल वो महाराष्ट्र सरकार में वन मंत्री है तो पिछली बार यानी दो की बात की जाए तो इन पांचों में से केवल एक सीट ही कांग्रेस जीत पाई थी बीजेपी का एक गढ़ माना जाता है और उम्मीद ये की जा रही है जिस तरह से प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी और गृह मंत्री अमित शाह ने इस पूरे इलाके में प्रचार किया उसको देखते हुए बीजेपी ये देख रही है कि उन्हें एज है लेकिन कल यहां की जनता जो है वो तय कर पाएगी जी राइट रॉन थैंक्स वेरी मच फॉर जॉइनिंग अस वी नाउ जॉइन बाय संजय कुमार प्रोफेसर इन सीएसडीएस पॉलिटिकल एनालिस्ट सोफोलॉजिस्ट संदीप शास्त्री डायरेक्टर ऑफ एकेडमिक्स एट एनआईटीटी एजुकेशन ट्रस्ट नेशनल कोऑर्डिनेटर एट लोक नीति थैंक यू बोथ फॉर बीइंग विद अस एक्सीलेंट वॉइसेस संजय कुमार फर्स्ट टू यू आई जस्ट लाइक टू टर्न आवर अटेंशन टू तमिलनाडु द प्राइम मिनिस्टर हैज मेड एट विजिट्स पर्सनली to tamil nadu that's quite clearly a, a area of focus in this first phase a huge one for the bjp um they didn't do as well as the uh, upa last time around uh, in phase 1 in these particular seats uh, do you believe that um, you know they worked particularly hard and have a chance of turning that around in these seats uh vishnu you're right that bjp has been working very hard in tamil nadu it's not a hard, it's not a work of the last few months but i think if you look at prime minister modi has been paying uh, a lot of visit to tamil nadu remember it started with when the parliament was being the new parliament was being inaugurated and the sengol was being brought from tamil nadu mm-hmm. when the pran pratishtha uh, uh, ceremony was to take place on the 22nd of january uh, so in a way prime minister modi started his you know 10 day uh, kind of a tour moving from one temple to another and it also started from tamil nadu so it is very clear that bjp has been eyeing uh, for tamil nadu and uh, also because prime minister modi has made an appeal that this time bjp is is setting an eye for 370 and nda 400 that's only possible if bjp is able to expand its wing expand its footprints in the southern state 
Tamil Nadu is a very big state, 39 seats uh, are from Tamil Nadu and BJP has not done well in the past. 2019 Lok Sabha election, BJP only had 3% vote. So BJP has worked hard. There are enough signs that BJP support base has gone up. They have been able to form a good alliance. Whether this is going to get converted into seats or not, I think we still need to wait and see whether the increased support base of BJP will give electoral dividend in terms of number of seats to BJP from Tamil Nadu. All right. And uh, Sandeep Shastri, now to you. You know, there, there are a lot of issues that one has uh, been talking about in in on news channels. The opposition has been raising the issue of electoral bonds, corruption. We just heard Rahul Gandhi and Akhilesh Yadav uh, yesterday in their press conference also talking about it. Uh, but And the Prime Minister has been talking about Viksit Bharat. The BJP has been talking about Viksit Bharat and also the Ram Temple. How much of a resonance does uh, this criticism that, uh, you know, the opposition has been raising really have with the electorate on the ground? Uh, this is a valid question. Electoral bonds has the potential to become a point of debate. But I think in the nature of the contest and the nature of the campaign and what we have seen for the first round, I don't think that much attention has been paid to the electoral bonds issues. The opposition does not seem to have made it a very critical issue as part of their campaign. Uh, that, I think, is where... Um, the electoral bonds issues would lie. But I think in Tamil Nadu, what you see very interestingly and importantly happening is the effort of the BJP to redefine the agenda of the debate by shifting it away from a Dravidian contest to a Dravidian plus contest by trying to displace the Anna DMK and move into the second position as the alliance leader. That's what they are aiming to do tomorrow as part of their agenda. Uh, what I'll be looking for very closely in this one of the five seats which are going to the polls is, will the voter turnout increase? And if it increases, in which area it increases? Because that will give us an indication of what the trends are moving towards. Yeah. I'm not for a moment saying that any increase in voter turnout indicates either this way or that way. But I think in the areas where the increase happens, it would be an indication of certain trends which we can discern from uh, what emerges. Sanjay uh, Kumar, uh, you know, as far as the BJP is concerned and, um, you know, what they have been working on, not just now, but for a period of time, Article 370, they've spoken about a CA, the Uniform Civil Code, the entire issue of, uh, of the Ram Temple. The opposition, particularly the Congress, has been banking on... Uh, actual employment numbers on the ground saying that rail employment was not being properly looked at. Do you believe that the entire issue of employment might end up being one of the fundamental themes in this election? Sorry, Vishnu, I couldn't get to the point. Are you able to hear me now? I can hear you. It's a slightly low volume, but just... The issue of employment, ah. which is what the opposition has been talking about, is there anything statistically that you, as a statistician, also refer to to actually uh, perhaps analyze whether there is enough substance in this opposition argument that employment is something that's not working out in our country? I don't think that there's no substance because in the survey, what survey catches is the people's experience. Yes, the government can come out with a counter narrative citing uh, various other data from other sources to say uh, unemployment ratio has come down compared to 10 years ago or 15 years ago. Uh, that may be true, I'm not sure. But what survey does is to catch or gather people's actual experience on the ground. When we ask this question, do you think getting job has become easier or difficult compared to now compared to the past? A very large number of people, more than 60% say getting a job is tough, is, has become more difficult now. Uh, when we ask what is the biggest concern for a voter like you for this election? Unemployment comes to be number one, 27% choosing that and 23% mentioning price rise. So these are the real concerns on the ground. But I think these concerns are not shaping the voting decisions of the voter because they are also looking at the other achievements of the government, which you have referred Vishnu in terms of Ram Mandir, in terms of how India has emerged stronger in the on the world map, Prime Minister Modi's image. 
so what voters do is to they are considering both these issues on one side they think that government has not been able to do well on the issue of unemployment price rise but at the same time they think government has done a remarkable job by removing article 370 constructing a ram man ram temple uh, which has been waiting for last 500 years so what yeah. happens is that <laughs> these issues are shaping the voters cho voting choices of the voters much more right. than their concern about unemployment and price rise all right i'd like uh, sandeep shastri also to quickly uh, answer on that and the, the you know the bjp doing a good job of conveying its achievements but at the same time when they talk of viksit bharat it's 2047 uh, and uh, and uh, equally so you know talking about the ram temple as this huge achievement of the government uh, i would fully endorse what sanjay ji just now said but add one or two points and i have i will endorse because both of us are part of the same study that was done uh my added point to what sanjay ji said is yes employment is a concern but is it about wanting better employment than my current employment or not having employment at all see when i say employment is a concern am i saying that i am not happy with the job i am currently doing or is it an aspiration for the future also while unemployment or better employment is a concern the question is who do you look to for resolving that challenge do you look to the government or do you look to the opposition to resolve the challenge so if it is going to become a voting issue it depends on who is it that you perceive yes. as the one who can solve the problem all right as you said i'm just interrupting because i need to take a short break we are going to come back top of 9 o'clock in just 4 minutes from now and we'll have our guests back for this fantastic analysis what is this all about india getting set to vote tomorrow phase 1 it's a huge phase the biggest the biggest phase details. in this election and uh, remember to watch all the coverage right here on ndtv we'll slip into a short break and return with more Good evening. The stage is set for the high octane 2024 election battle, the first and biggest phase of the elections. 102 seats across 21 states vote tomorrow in the first phase of the 18th Lok Sabha elections. Voting spreading across the length and the breadth of India, 21 states and union territories. Now head on the show we will we'll be going across to our reporters now in 2019 in this uh, particular uh, you know the seats the UPA had 145 of them of these 102 the NDA 41 so we'll take you through all the highlights we'll be going across to our reporters as well uh, ahead uh, to uh, you know find out about the key contests taking place in the various states In fact let's just introduce Nikunj Garg joining us from Chhattisgarh we've got Amritanshi who joins us uh, as well from Chindwara in in Madhya Pradesh Harsha Kumari Singh from Jaipur before we go across to the map I'd like to go across to Nikunj first Nikunj a horrific uh, naxal attack the loss of life 29 people dead in Chhattisgarh the issue of naxalism back in sharp focus ahead of the first phase of polling could you give us an idea of the law and order situation in Bastar what are authorities saying Well absolutely Vishnu unfortunate incident that but that is not uh, the end of it in the last two odd months there have been at least three massive encounters scores of people have been dead on both the sides security forces as well as the uh, alleged naxals uh uh just day before yesterday that is you know 36 hours back a bjp village pradhan was hacked to death by the alleged naxals in one of the villages in uh, the naxal affected bastar and this is the ninth such killing in last three odd months where bjp workers or leaders have been killed in full public glare in full public view in uh, these naxal affected areas of bastar and adjoining areas now the small 11 number of seats here in entire state of chatisgarh Uh, in terms of population it's a small state but in terms of geographical area uh, one of the one of the you know amongst the mid mid sized states of the country but despite having only 11 uh, seats there are at least three phases of elections it is same as 2019 and the first round always happens at the place where i am now standing in the heart of the naxal territory at bastar uh, close to jagdalpur at this point in time and the first three seats the elections will take uh, Uh, take place here 
Uh, just as we started our broadcast today at around 8 p.m., there was a massive security forces convoy that was wanting to go inside and there was traveling to move inside with the poll officials to see the final round of poll preparedness uh, be before the polling starts tomorrow early morning. Now, these, this is, of course, in the entire stretch of the country right now, 21 states, 102 seats, fate of the eight, at least eight union ministers uh, to be sealed tomorrow in the polling box in, in the AVMs. Uh, this is the region where the violence has almost always marred elections. Yep. So the attempt once all over again would be to ensure that at least from the law and order point of view, uh, it is, the elections are violence free and there is no major untoward incident that takes place. However, as I said, during the assembly polls, during the Lok Sabha polls, almost always the elections have been marred by some amount of violence. Yep. That's right. And, and you know, really spare a thought there, for yep. the election officials who go out, you know, to the very remote areas to help uh, the tribals cast their votes. Let's now go across uh, to uh, Harsha, who joins us from Jaipur. And Harsha, in, uh, in Rajasthan, the BJP hoping uh, for a hat trick again, 25 on 25. The Congress hoping uh, to uh, get back some of its lost prestige, given that it's always been a wipeout in the national elections. Absolutely. And it's also a litmus test for the BJP leadership. Remember, there's been an absolutely new leadership that's taken charge in Rajasthan. Uh, uh, you know, first timer, uh, you know, Bhajan Lal Sharma is the chief minister here. So definitely the BJP is hoping in Rajasthan that they get 25 out of 25 and that will really be a hat trick for them. The Congress is hoping to open its account. But I must tell you, Gargi, that on the ground, there is a contest. I mean, it's not such a, you know, a wipeout. There are uh, at least four or five seats in the first phase which are in context. So for example, Lagor, where Jyoti Mirdha is taking on Hanuman Beniwal, the Jat strong man. It's a, uh, the, Jat, uh, the Jat arithmetic is cast versus uh, cast in that sense, the same cast, but that seat is in a contest. So is Churu. Uh, you know, Rahul Kaswaha has crossed over from uh, the, uh, the BJP to the Congress and he's taking on para-Olympian gold medalist Devendra Jhajaria. That seat's in a contest. Dosa also, a tough fight there. Uh, so is Seeker. And of course, we were talking about union ministers who are fighting this election. So you have Arjun Ram Meghwal uh, hoping to retain his seat and Bhupendra Yadav, otherwise known as organization man, uh, you know, Rajya Sabha member, first time getting down into uh, grassroots politics, you know, getting down to the nitty gritty, the brass tracks of democracy, so to speak. So in that sense, the first phase of Rajasthan is important. More than 5 crore voters and about half of them, 2 crore plus, will be voting uh, tomorrow in the first phase. Of course, the city of Jaipur, uh, which doesn't have very big star candidates, but the city of Jaipur, uh, where I am right now, uh, is also voting tomorrow. All right, I'm going to go across. Harsha, thanks very much uh, to uh, Amritanji, who joins us from Chindwara uh, in Madhya Pradesh. Uh, Amritanji, huge contest over there in Chindwara. What's at stake for Kamal Nath? So basically, Chindwara is the most hottest seat of Madhya Pradesh because BJP in 2019 swept like across uh, 28 seats, leaving the seat uh, for Congress. Congress only won on one seat uh, uh, in 2019. Though Chindwara is like uh, the uh, like the seat which has been like uh, continuing uh, for the uh, Nath family for like 44 years. Basically, uh, Kamal Nath and Nakul Nath are, uh, uh, Kamal Nath won around like nine times, record nine times he has been running as an MP from this seat. Right now, he's an MLA from the Chinwara uh, seat uh, itself. Also, Nakul Nath in 2019 contested uh, uh, against uh, uh, Nathan Shah from BJP, uh, though he defeated Nathan Shah uh, like from a lead of uh, 35,000 votes. Uh, also, this time, uh, Nakulnath will be contesting as uh, uh, as the candidate from the Congress. But uh, BJP has like fielded uh, Banti Sahu uh, from their party. Uh, though uh, there has been a mass uh, exodus uh, from the uh, Congress, and uh, nearly like many people who are very close to Kamalnath, like Deepak Saxena or Syed Zafar, left the party and joined BJP just before the elections. Though uh, like the Chindwara uh, has been like a particular uh, a 36 percent of tribal voters here and it has been said that whoever won uh, the heart of tribal voters like easily gets the throne uh, also Chinwara uh, like around 16 lakh voters will be like voting from uh, uh, 7 a.m. Uh, tomorrow in the morning and uh, uh, the the male and the women uh, like population uh, also uh, uh, police has like uh, uh, the proper uh, system here the law and order is like being like kept out from a very longer time since like two months the elections uh, like 
were announced. Uh, uh, the Chinwada seat is like basically uh, uh, has been said as the hottest seat because like the BJP right. uh, national president JP Nadda held a public meeting here day before yesterday. Amit Shah was here for a road show. Uh, all the big faces were in Chinwada. Uh, absolutely. For, uh, so it like, is an absolutely uh, huge uh, area meetings. over there. Amritanshi, we'll yeah. keep coming back to you. But I think, Argy, what might be useful now is just to give our viewers an overall idea of where it's all going to be taking place. So let me just quickly move across over here. Oops, did I get up too soon? Left that box yeah. over there. But let's bring up the map over here uh, so that we can actually give uh, our viewers an idea uh, of where exactly seats. all of this is going to be taking place. 102 seats, uh, 21 states. We're going to quickly go through all of these uh, states. Uh, it is the first phase of the elections, the biggest phase, uh, a massive deployment of, uh, of security personnel, of uh, those in the, involved in the poll process. Several parts of the Northeast will be seeing uh, polling taking place. It's going to be all across the country. This seeds an incredible spread all across the country, right from the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Lakshadweep, the Northeast of the country. Not all the seats are of Assam, but certainly Arunachal Pradesh sees many more over there, parts of South and East. Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra as well, uh, Manipur, uh, Kashmir also in a limited way, Mizoram one seat, Meghalaya two seats, uh, Nagaland, uh, Puducherry uh, just one seat over there, Rajasthan 12 seats, so approximately half of the total number of seats uh, in Rajasthan, Sikkim goes to polls as well, there are assembly elections simultaneously in several of these states and finally Tamil Nadu, the big one, 39 out of 39 uh, seats uh, in Tamil Nadu, they all go to voting tomorrow, one seat in Tripura. Now, in terms of the size of what we are looking at, 102 constituencies, the total number of voters, 16.6 crores, the total number of candidates, 1,625, women candidates, 134 this time around, the total number of polling stations, 1.87 lakh. And personnel deployed a whopping 18 lakh people. So as you can see, it is absolutely huge. Let's also bring you some numbers on what took place in 2019. Phase one in 2019, in these 102 seats, the NDA had 47. The India Alliance didn't exist then. It was the UPA then had 49. So uh, they were just a little ahead, but that had a lot to do with the performance of uh, the, the DMK in, uh, in Tamil Nadu itself. So that is what happened last time around. But if you look at the individual performance of the two big parties, the BJP in this first phase last time around was considerably ahead uh, of the Congress party. Kargi. All right, Vishnu, thanks for taking us uh, through all those numbers. And let's go across to our panel now. We're, we're joined by Dr. Saeed Zafar Islam, national spokesperson of uh, BJP. Uh, uh, Puga Zendi, VA Puga Zendi joining us, national spokesperson of the AIA DMK, Dr. Pooja Tripathi, national spokesperson Congress, uh, Salem Dharani Dharan, a national spokesperson of the DMK, Nirja Chaudhary, senior journalist, Amitabh Tiwari, political strategist who's here in studio with us, and RK Radhakrishnan, senior associate editor of Frontline. Thank you so much all uh, for joining us on the program. And I think, Vishnu, as we were talking, uh, Tamil Nadu is the big one to watch out for all seats going to the elections uh, tomorrow. It's the state which has seen the maximum number of visits of any prime minister in, you know, in a short Absolutely. period of time and in, in this year alone. Uh, so I'd like to start by asking Salem uh, Dharani Dharan, uh, how are you feeling ahead of the elections tomorrow with the prime minister giving such a big focus uh, to Tamil Nadu? And, uh, and, and, and you know, the, we've been hearing the voices of the BJP BJP saying that uh, people of Tamil Nadu are are now ready to move beyond Dravidian politics. Yeah, I think they can say whatever they want to say, but the ground reality is that the, there's so much love for achievements. And DMK would have been 39 in Tamil Nadu and one in Pondicherry. There's 40 on 40. There is so much uh, belief in the Dravidian model. I, I I I've been speaking about this in every television debate I've been to. You you tell me the any any BJP rule state the progress that they have made and compared with Tamil Nadu, is it comparable? No. Any socio-economic, you, you take Gujarat, for example, which has been ruled by BJP for the last 25 years and compare it with Tamil Nadu, any socio-economic, you can't compare. In every metric, Tamil Nadu is better than Gujarat. Every metric. There's not even a single socio-economic metric in which uh, they can say that we have done better than Tamil Nadu. No, but Inclusive would the model? elections necessarily be fought on social metrics alone? There have been lots of themes which have been brought up by the Prime Minister. For example, the issue of national... Uh, the integrity of our boundaries, the Kachativo issue, uh, other key, uh, the entire issue of alliances has been brought up. 
he has also personally taken it upon himself to be to champion Tamil identity, something the DMK has been found wanting last time around. So it won't just be on development grounds. See, but again, rhetoric has to match with action, right? Okay. For example, this Prime Minister has visited Tamil Nadu six, seven times in the recent past. But what happened when the floods happened? He never came here. He never gave the money that we wanted. We didn't get any money for the floods even now. And when the floods happened in Gujarat, he goes the next day. This is stepmotherly treatment. Point so the number finance one. minister was there, the defense minister was there. As, I mean, those were fairly high-level visits, I mean. But still, the prime minister visited right. Gujarat, he did not visit Tamil Nadu, and okay. we haven't got any money. Gujarat got 1,000 crores. All right, fair enough. Would you like to reply? Well, and one more important point. Can I just yes. give you 30 sure. seconds? Go ahead. When it comes to Kachati issue, what was the BJP doing for the last 10 years? And BJP also formed a committee on fishermen issue, and that committee has not met in the last two years. And people in Tamil Nadu understand all those things. And again, when it comes to rhetoric on Tamil, this Prime Minister says Tam has spoken Tamil here and there, broken Tamil. But the fact is, there are no Tamil teachers in Kendra Vijay School in Tamil Nadu. Tamil is allotted 20 times less money than Sanskrit, a language spoken by 20,000 people. The money for the classical Tamil Institute has been drastically increased, yes. sorry, drastically reduced. Right? So, rhetoric has to match, match with action. What have we done for the Tamil language or the culture? You haven't done anything. Right? So, you can. All right, well, let's get a response to that, Dr. Rasai. There's Afar Islam, your response to that. And when, you know, BJP says, Apki Bar Char So Par, that, you know, war cry, these were the new, these were the places that they were hoping to make inroads. Well, these rhetorics by, from the DMK spokesperson will not work anymore because the kind of efforts we have put in, with all sincerity, I can say that uh, we definitely expect at least 12, 13 seats uh, we will be able to win and then in many other places uh, in uh, Tamil Nadu. 12, 13, Nadu. People where? are fed up with this, this, these, politi these political parties. These political parties, they we have identified seats. We are putting all all, uh, okay. all efforts there. We are mobilizing all res our resources. Not every constituency we are focusing. Even though we are we, we are uh, our honourable prime minister is actively visiting there, but our target is that number of seats we have targeted. We are we are focused there. We have mobilized all our resources there, and we are confident of shocking everyone, including. The guy who is speaking from the from DMK and the, the uh, DMK leadership, because we know exactly that people are fed up with them, people are fed up with uh, all the other political parties there, and they want a change. And change sure. will come from when they migrate from the Dravidian politics they have, and they're definitely we're looking for all a right, change. All right, well, let's get in, Mr. Radha Krishnan here because issues now they are they can relate with them. Well, Mr. Radha yeah. Krishnan, your comments. Yeah, uh, Tamil Nadu is slightly different from the reality uh, that you see from Delhi. In Delhi studios, yes, uh, BJP is possibly winning every single seat it is contesting in Tamil Nadu. But let's face facts out of the 129 seats in South India uh, in the last elections, which was a uh, complete sweep for the BJP. It won uh, 29, 4 in Telangana and 25 in uh, Karnataka. It's uh, worse this time around because the uh, BJP is contesting without uh, its preferred ally, uh, ADMK with which it actually won four seats in the assembly election in 2021. BJP is a much, much weaker force. Without the help of the ADMK, it, is, it will not win a single seat in Tamil Nadu. That is uh, what the ground reflects. And uh, in some places, there is a chance that the party uh, comes second. Uh, like, for instance, Tirnalveli. Uh, I, I, I see the possibility of winning only in Puducherry, which, of course, doesn't fall under Tamil Nadu. It's a union territory. There is a possibility of one seat uh, there. Uh, apart from that, Annamalai could come uh, in second or uh, third place. That's the only possibility for the BJP. But look at uh, what has happened in Tamil Nadu. Uh, I would go back to the Prime Minister's visits. And uh, I would also like to emphasize the fact that from the time of independence to this day, no Prime Minister of India, despite the fact that Manmohan Singh was the Prime Minister for 10 years, and that particular uh, UPA regime, UPA 1, had 13 ministers from Tamil Nadu, five in the cabinet and eight uh, ministers of state, I did not see uh, Manmohan Singh visit more than, uh, say, four times okay. or something like that in all. So the, the, uh, the fact is that uh, eight visits to Tamil Nadu, all after the floods, not a single paisa for uh, flood relief, not even a stone turned to build the all-day institute of med medical sciences. You would all have seen the viral video where children from the north of India are, uh, you know, kind of uh, trying very, very hard. All right. To, so uh, not enough, as you mentioned, Mr. Radhakrishnan, done as far as uh, Tamil Nadu is concerned. That is your assertion. I just wanted to uh, go across to Amitabh to talk about um, Modi ki guarantee, which is the premise of uh, the manifesto of the BJP versus 
the Nyai Patra, which is the 45 page manifesto of the Congress. Is there anything in either manifesto that you find personally compelling, which you feel might have a real impact? See, essentially, if you see the latest CSDA survey also, which talks about mm. various issues, unemployment, price rise, etc. If you see the top three factors, why are people voting for the BJP? The first is development or the work done in the past 10 years. The second is the social welfare schemes or the labharthis. And the third is the charisma of Modi, which is the Modi factor. The Nyai has some good innovative schemes on unemployment. However, the issue is that the opposition has not been raising it on a sustainable basis or a sustaining basis for the past five years. They have largely been focusing on crony capitalism, etc., which does not resonate with the rural voters, and those are not the real issues. And the problem also with the Congress party will face is that they need to communicate their manifesto promises to the booth level. So, do they have the infrastructure, social media infrastructure, the WhatsApp groups, as well as the soldiers on the ground who would take the message of the guarantees of the Congress party to the booth level? That is going to be a fairly big challenge for the Congress party. And it happened in 2019 also, because when they promised the Nyaya Yojana of 72,000 rupees, they were paying almost 12 times what the Prime Minister had announced in the form of a Kisan Nidhi scheme. But the Congress party was not able to educate the voters about its promises. And I think that is a big lacuna which they will have to face. All right. I, uh, Nirja Chaudhary, your comments on that and taking from there, uh, this is something the BJP we see is able to, you know, uh, project to the voters, project to the country. Uh, the Prime Minister has been talking about Vixit Bharat, this promise of a developed country by 2047. But uh, equally, he's been talking uh, a lot about the Ram Temple and we've, you know, seen a lot of uh, talk and uh, messaging around that. On the other hand, you have the Congress that has been uh, as uh, you know, Amitabh said right now, not been able to really convey all that it's promising the electorate, but and also its criticisms of the BJP. If we talk about electoral bonds or the ED raids, is this something that they're able to uh, get their messaging right when they take it across to the electorate? You know, many people ask what is different about this election in 2024, and I think uh, uh, what is different is that Narendra Modi is seeking a third term. There have been other prime ministers in the past who sought a third term, Jawaharlal Nehru in 62 and won it. Though he soon, I mean, soon after that, there was the India-China war, his health was frail and 64, he died. Indira Gandhi in 67 sought a third term, 67 and then 72, 71 and then 77, 10 years later, she was routed all over North India. Dr. Manmohan Singh, the third Prime Minister, who sought a third term, 2004 came to power, 2014, the grand old party was routed, came to 40 plus seats. Narendra Modi is seeking a third term and remains popular and is really, uh, if you ask one issue on the BJP side, Mandir, I have, you know, wherever I've travelled, a little bit in Maharashtra, a little bit in UP, a little bit in Rajasthan. Mandir, people have, you know, has made Hindus very, very happy. But whether it's a poll getting, major poll getting issue, I don't know. I, I, I feel it hasn't had the traction or the momentum has petered out. What is then the central issue on the BJP side? It is Narendra Modi his leadership, his delivery, and that's the way people are looking. On the opposition side, certainly I, India and Congress, price rise, electoral bonds, joblessness. Yes, there has been a dissatisfaction expressed by many, many people. But whether they'll be able to be a match for Modi, and, there, you know, in Rajasthan, for instance, where I was a few days ago, there are tucker seats. There are seats today, around 10 of them, where there is a contest, unlike the past. Mm -hmm. Now, does this mean that the Modi uh, wave is on the wane a little bit? Or does that mean this is a very thanda election, silent election, and it's just gone under? All this we will know. And of course, the you know, the real suspense is what if Mr. Modi comes back for a third term, what he will do during that third term. Sure. Um, I just wanted to go across to Dr. Pooja Tripathi, national spokesperson of the Congress. Uh, 
You know, Pooja, one of the themes of the BJP in their manifesto and in their election rhetoric is of a strong India. They've spoken about India's GDP growth, the economic resilience, infrastructure development, the international presence of India. Um, they've raised the issue of sovereignty when it comes to Kachathivo, etc., etc. If you look at the Congress's manifesto, the BJP says it is retrograde. They say that, for example, the Agnipat scheme, which this government introduced, the BJP says they're going to remove that. Uh, firstly, do you believe... Uh, or do you deny that the strong BJP, the strong India narrative of the BJP is going to work? Could you unmute yourself? Uh, Pooja, I think you just need to... I unmute. disagree, yeah. Vishnu, that Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji is projecting a vision for a strong India or a roadmap for a Vixit Bharat. All he talks about in his uh, political speeches is Mandir, Machli, Mutton and Mughals. Ten years into the uh, power, this is the report card he has to give to a thing. He abuses Congress most of the times, like two thirds of the time. And then he gives ki sawar mein matan khate hai, machli khate hai, and all that things. If you look at the manifesto, if you look at the both the parties' manifesto, there has been, I, I disagree with Amitabh ji too. If you look at the manifesto, we formed the manifesto committee in December 2023. Yes. And we came up, um, came up with a very landmark manifesto. We talk about the joblessness that's plaguing the country at 65.7%. We talk about the urban guarantee exam, uh, scheme. We talk about uh, scraping the Agni path. We're talking about giving a guarantee of MSP to the farmers. We're talking about bridging the uh, gender gap in labor force participation rate. We're talking about empowering women. But what does BJP's manifesto actually? They just formed a uh, committee. That's the seriousness for the people's issue. They just formed a manifesto committee 13 days back. And BJP's manifesto is a glorified photo op of Pradhan Mantri Narendra Modi ji in various poses and things. Where the country, Lok Niti CSDS survey was just a week back, where 62% felt that corruption is heavily rampant in the country, where 27% of youth was uh, facing the wrath of unemployment. If you just check unemployment or a job guarantee, you're, you're just uh, popularizing it like a Modi ki guarantee, Modi ki guarantee. What is Modi ki guarantee for the extreme joblessness that this country is okay. facing? What is Modi ki guarantee for the All right, so uh, let's youth that is facing the lack of Pooja, you've, na of you've raised uh, but also, eight Pooja, or nine you're points. Talking very, you know, let's just get a response. Over here. Let's get a response from the this BJP. This is something the Congress not yeah. able to convey as let's strongly. Let's just quickly get a response right. uh, from the BJP convey, on this. All right, just a moment. Let's just get a response from the BJP. Let's get a BJP response. Let's get a BJP response from the side. Zafar Islam, go ahead. I think... Somebody from the Congress has already spoken that how the, their manifesto has been prepared. The group of PAs of their senior leaders have actually prepared their uh, manifestos where, without putting sincere effort, any sincere effort by their senior leaders. So that is the state of uh, state uh, in which the, this uh, manifestos I'm have been manifest created, prepared in the Congress. The I do not want to comment on the Congress manifesto because everybody has discarded it. The people of India has discarded it because it's a it's a paper which nobody exactly actually like have trust in. Those whatever has been said. Uh, but away from that, no. So away from please. I didn't interrupt you. Have some decency. Nobody has discarded our manifesto. You. Please yeah, talk yeah. on your manifesto. Have some patience. Oh, no, no, no. Puja, one oh, second. Let's not interrupt. You will, you, you, you will have the... You Dr. Islam, go ahead. You will have the opportunity. No, you will have the... Your guarantee for the child. No, you will have the... Puja, we don't do this. We try to avoid fighting like this. I gave you an opportunity. Let him respond to that. We'll come back to you if we have time. For sure. Uh, See, I, I, think, I think you should understand that uh, we are not doing it tutu me me. You, you, when you have the opportunity to speak, I will not interrupt you. Yes, have go decency. ahead. Go ahead, sir. Away from that, let me tell you that our manifesto is very clear. Our manifesto is absolutely clear. We have identified 10 social sectors where which will be the which will be our priority. Initially, we had spoken about uh, spoken about uh, four four priority uh, social sectors like. Uh, 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 Anadata, Garib, and uh, 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 youth and Nari. Now we have added it to end priority for in the social area, and fourteen, uh, uh, fourteen where uh, areas where we need to see the growth momentum in, in in the country. So sectors have been added. Fourteen sectors have been identified, which will be prioritized by our. Uh, our government once we are elected because that is that will take India to 
another level we have not we have not committed for any any uh, uh, revenue culture which other political parties are talking about we have only identified areas which will ensure that the people of this great country will be empowered and the country will be the benefit, biggest okay. beneficiary we are not overly concerned what you have what you have stated in your manifesto right. we are only uh, focused sir, you know, on what you are talking about all these points but when it comes to the rallies and, will, and the campaigning one what one you know the dominant theme is usually around the ram temple which we've been hearing and just now on ram navmi as well uh, you know there was a lot of uh, talk about the ram temple so when there's so much that you know you're talking about in the manifesto and achievements of the modi government somehow it's the ram temple that seems to be getting uh, most of the air time not at all i mean we we are focused on everything see that that is something which was a, a, a commitment in every manifesto in the past we had made this commitment today is the reality i'm sure that those who have faith in this in uh, ram and and the relig hindu religion will definitely will be happy and thrilled with joy but we are not asking them to vote because of the temple which has been built we are ba bas basically asking them to vote because what we have been able to deliver as per our manifesto whatever commitment we had made we have been able to deliver it right unlike many other political parties they just want to project something but I, 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 but that's a hollow promises they have sure. they have been making time and again right. Doctor, yeah. nobody trust congress party just, because they have been sure. uh, they have been promising the okay dr islam half a second just, i just, just want to complete 10 seconds yes so they have been promised so they have been promising that they will provide shelter they will provide home they will provide uh, uh, tap water they will provide electricity connection they will provide so many things but th did they really provide okay. no answer is no all right but we have been able to provide them whether right toilet, i just wanted to quickly uh, go across to vfo got any national gas connection of all the ways of living is something well. which we are provided right dr islam i wanted to just go back uh, to tamil nadu Uh, to be joined by Mr. Pukudendi, the national spokesperson of the AIA DMK, uh, sir, the fact is that you broke up with your alliance with the BJP. Uh, it seemed to be a straight fight between the DMK and uh, the AIA DMK in the state. Um, do you believe that the DMK and its alliances seems to be better placed than you are presently in these elections? Good evening, sir. Good evening to NTTV. In 2019, DMK swept all the seats except the third. Because of that, uh, former Chief Minister of PS, he won the constituency. The same thing now. Now I feel that I am uh, very clearly I am saying here because that uh, DMK will get more seats. DMK alliance that Ramanathapuram and the other four five constituency still the fight. Next to next fight is there. The Puducherry definitely NDA will win. NDA will get some five to seven seats. That is a race is going on. That is also. the fighting between the dmk alliance and here because the problem is that two faction now in tamil nadu admk party is split that is the main reason that uh, you want to see that the previous election amma served our leadership of uh, jayalalitha former chief minister 37 seats secured actually uh, claimed that uh, now it is not possible because another thing is my friend told from bjp very clearly the name of ram mandir that uh, not asking the vote or something demanding seeking or something that is not correct also so the people uh, not giving any importance from tamil nadu for mandir or something because dravidan ideology is here continuously still periyar perej ranna these things are there the leaders mgr amma jayalalitha like that that is a problem is going on so that uh, last time they swept this time also DMK Congress alliance will get more seats. This is my opinion. Sure, I don't know what I didn't see this. Amitabh, let's just turn our attention now to Bengal. Uh, there are three seats uh, going to polls this time around: uh, Kutch Bihar, Alipur Dwar, uh, and Jalpaiguri. These are areas where the BJP has done well. They've got uh, sitting MPs from these three seats. The performance of the BJP has dramatically gone up, and not so much in the level of the assembly, in as much as it has gone up in the Lok Sabha level. Do you believe that? the bjp finally can give a serious challenge to mamta banerji in bengal it looks like because uh, there is anti incumbency also against mamta banerji and there are three ms which are very key there mm -hmm. one is the mahila vote uh, mahila vote uh, the tmc enjoyed a 4% lead yes. vis a vis men uh, this time because of the sandesh khali incident bjp hopes to make significant dent in the mahila vote 
The second M is the minority vote. Now, because the Congress and the CPM are contesting separately and the, there is a fissure in the India block, this could even lead to the split of the minority vote. And the minority vote there is fairly high, it is mm. double the national average. So, even a 5 10 percent swing can mean significant vote share because the TMC enjoys a thin lead of 3 percent in 2019. And a third M is the Mahajot, again the CPM and the Congress alliance, again who are giving a tough fight to the India block or rather the India block friend turned fourth <laughs> turned friend again like Mamata That's Banerjee right. because they are also facing an existential crisis. If they are not able to win seats this time, then CPM cedes a large amount of space to the BJP and the TMC. Mm. The TMC hopes that with the introduction of the CAA, the split of the minority vote does not happen. So, these are the moving parts in the Bengal uh, piece. If there is a 5 percent swing from the TMC to the BJP, there are some 12 seats where BJP finished runner up sure. and BJP is hoping to target those seats. Right and uh, this time in Bengal again it's uh, voting across all the seven phases. This is something pointed out uh, by the opposition by Mamta Banerjee as well. Nija Chaudhary, your comments mm. on Bengal and uh, also what Mamta Banerjee talks about LPF level playing field. This is something the opposition has been going on and on about uh, when it comes to how you know they, they come head to head uh, during these elections and, uh, and, and, and this uh, you know uh, concern uh, that there may not be that level playing field. You know, the states being watched very keenly, Bengal really tops that list. Of course, there is Maharashtra, there is Karnataka. Uh, uh, these are called the swing states. But certainly, Mamta Banerjee is one of those who's, you know, pushing back the onslaught of the BJP. And the BJP will hope to mop up more than the 18 seats it had got last time because it's bound to lose in the north one, two, three in different states. So it has to make that up. It will either try and make it up in UP uh, and go back to its 2014 tally of 71 and it will try and see how much it can push in West Bengal where it has an opportunity. So yes, it absolutely right what was said by uh, my co-panelists that minorities this time are not going to waste their vote at all. And I think that's an inner internal decision. Uh, women, yes. And then this sub-national feeling of, you know, that Mamta Banerjee has often played in the played on in the past, and that is the Bengali nationalism. I think she will try and do that. Of course, the delivery, the schemes, which will be by both sides. Yeah. They have the, the BJP has the Labhartis, Mamta Banerjee has the slew of her programs and schemes for people. Uh, so let's see. It's a very Keenly contested and keenly what state West Bengal. Sure. Dr. Uh, Pooja Tripathi, let's turn our attention now to Rajasthan. You've had a disastrous performance recently in the assembly elections. Um, obviously, caste arithmetic is something which is critical in all states, but certainly in Rajasthan. But keeping that aside for a moment, the entire issue of leadership of your party within Rajasthan, uh, do you believe that uh, the crisis that the Congress has been in is close to being resolved? It's absolutely dissolved, Vishnu. You know, the crisis was yeah. had long foregone, and we are fighting these elections. We fought the assembly elections as a united front, and we are fought fighting these elections as a united front. And uh, I want to reiterate what your field reporter just said that it's not just a just a swing by wave in Rajasthan. There are closely contested seats. I I remember she mentioned Churu, and that's why we we hope and we are very confident of improving our 2019 talent in Rajasthan. Right, uh, the, there was talk of how Mr. Ashok Gehlot might be asked to contest, Sachin Pilot may be asked to contest this election. None of that happened. Now there's criticism that Ashok Gehlot is, you know, spending too much time with the web of Gehlot's campaign. So there's still a lot of issues that remain uh, within uh, the leadership of the Congress party. No, Sachin Pilot has been taking, uh, you know, back-to-back -back, uh, political rallies. He's been campaigning for the candidates. And there will always be talk whenever elections are around the corner, there will be talk. Somebody is contesting, somebody is not. Somebody has been asked to contest. And these are just hearsay rumors. Uh, Ashok Gehloji is contributing uh, to the campaign of campaign of all the candidates and definitely to Jodhpur too because his son is contesting. And we, we wish to retain, uh, we wish to win the Jodhpur seat. But both Ashok Gehloth and Sachin Pilot and the whole uh, Congress unit with the support from the uh, Delhi team is contesting these elections as a united front. 
Nijal, let's take a look now at Maharashtra. Uh, how is it in a sense there's so many battles, internal, ba small battles within battles being fought out in Maharashtra. It's a battle of identity uh, for uh, the, the, the Shiv Sena Shifsena factions. Senas, two NCPs. Then the Mahayuti and the MVA are both looking uh, you know, to consolidate their hold, their relatively newly formed alliances. In fact, uh, the Mahayuti is very new. Uh, how significant is it in terms of all of these formations and these parties re-identifying themselves with a larger population? Nija, go ahead. Oh, this is mine? Yes. Okay, sorry, Vishnu. Uh, Maharashtra, as I said, is a very critical one. And tomorrow's state, Nagpur, where Mr. Gadkari is uh, seeking re-election, it's a, again a very significant one. Uh, happening, Ramtek, but overall in Maharashtra, the you know it's a very confused scene because uh, since the last elections, you had two parties split. The Shiv Sena split, and one the dominant group went to the BJP. The NCP split, and the dominant group, uh, led by the you know large number of MLAs, uh, went towards the BJP. So now you have the Mahayuti versus the. <laughs> MVA on the opposition side and made up of several parties on on the BJP side is the authority and the power of the state organizational heft of these parties that have split on the other side under Uddhav Thakre, Sharad Pawar, there is, you know, they have, there has been sympathy for them, even though they don't have their MLAs with them or the organizational structure left with them. And therefore, this remains to be, and of course, there is the Congress Party. Right. It remains to be seen how this, uh, the organization plus power versus sympathy pans out in elections. So that is being also watched very, very carefully. A quick comment, Amitab, also. Uh, and, and uh, you know, the fact that Maharashtra spread over five phases. Yeah, so it's spread over five phases, but last time also there were four phases largely. So the real question is who is the real Sena and who is the real NCP? Who has the votes? Shinde and Ajit Pawar have the MLAs and the MPs, but do they have the votes? And or uh, as uh, Nirja Ma'am said, does Uddhav Thakare or Sharad Pawar enjoy the sympathy factor? See, in any alliance, seamless transfer of vote is very important. Now, Shinde faction and Ajit Pawar faction have a bit of advantage of the symbol. Symbol plays a key role because even when you go to rural areas today, BJP is identified as a party of fool in the, in the tribal areas if you go. So, the symbol could lose a few votes for the Sharad Pawar faction and the Uddhav Thakare faction. All right. All right, we'll, we'll yeah. we're running out of time completely, but thank you so much for joining us. And tomorrow, the first phase of elections begin. Thank you to all the panelists for joining us today on the show. Well, we're going to take a short break up after that, an exclusive interview with Basuri Swaraj. She's contesting in the new, for the New Delhi constituency here in the national capital region. Uh, the daughter, of course, of the former foreign minister, Sushma Swaraj, a, a new young potential star in the BJP. Uh, do take a, a look at that interview coming up, including how she worked, where else, but once in NDTV as an intern. That's up next. <laughs>